How much harm have we done to Lake Victoria? What practices happens around Lake Victoria that we can turn around through uh, economic investments, through environmental cleanups that are sustainable, of course, and maybe through uh, a wake-up call to the entire communities based on Lake Victoria, including the Ugandan and, and Tanzanian waters. Orbiting 250 miles above, the space station provides us with the ultimate view of planet Earth. From this perspective, we ask our guests to engage with six questions that orbit around wonder and stories of hopefulness. For the next few minutes, this is our wonder space. Welcome to the 140th episode of the Wonder Space podcast. My name is Steve Cole, and over the past four years, I have had the privilege of asking the same six questions to amazing people from around the world. Questions that orbit around wonder and stories of hopefulness. We started during the COVID lockdown to enlarge people's vision and perspective and remind us that alongside crisis and emergency are always mind-blowing wonders in the natural world and hopeful stories that have the potential to fuel us and energise us, even in the most challenging of times. Before I introduce our guest this week, here is another one-minute wonder from our friends at Ask Nature, who are part of the Biomimicry Institute. Vitamin B7, or biotin, is a small molecule that's important for cell growth. Birds and reptiles all lay eggs, and the egg yolks contain everything necessary for an embryo to grow, including biotin. But biotin is also necessary for bacteria to grow. And so this makes egg yolk great food for bacteria, and it makes them susceptible to infection. But one way of preventing bacterial growth is to make sure there's no biotin available. To protect the yolk and the growing embryo, the white of eggs contains avidin, a biotin binding protein that mops up any of the vitamin it comes in contact with. Several factors make the avidin-biotin bond very strong. And significantly, the avidin itself changes shape once it binds with the biotin. Once a single molecule of biotin is inside a pocket of avidin, a portion of the avidin molecule swings across the top sealing the entrance and ensuring the vitamin cannot escape. It's then available to the developing embryo when needed, but completely locked off from potentially invading bacteria. For this Wonder Space episode, we orbit to a small island on the northeast of Lake Victoria in the waters of Kenya. Mafangano Island is the home to 20,000 people and where we find our amazing guest, Vincent Arguena. Vincent is an academic pursuing a PhD in geography, focusing on addressing food security challenges and the impact of climate change and agricultural practices. Vincent is also co-founder and project director of a community-based organization called Train My Generation, who work with and train the community climate change, women's health, environment regeneration, and community microfinance. On this episode, Vincent also talks about an ambitious scientific and research expedition called Save Lake Victoria, which will be taking place in 2025. A 1,000 kilometre expedition to visit key restoration projects and shed light on the regenerative investment opportunities that can play such a powerful role in the lake's revitalization. We join Vincent in a bustling and lively community on Mafangano Island, and you'll hear a number of them in the background. Vincent, it's so great to have you on board Wonder Space today. Uh, speaking from a small island on Lake Victoria in the waters of Kenya. Um, we asked our six Wonder Space questions to Mark Haviland in episode 118. 
who has since passionately nominated you as someone he so admires and someone pursuing vital academic and community work. So it's brilliant to have you on board. So firstly, from our imaginary window seat on the space station with this panoramic overview of Earth, our first question is, if we could do a fly past over any part of the world that is significant to you, which place, city or country would it be and why? Yeah, if I had uh, the opportunity to do a fly past, it would undoubtedly be over the mile forest complex in Kenya. Uh, this region holds deep significance for me, both personally and, and professionally. The Mao is not just a crucial water catchment area. Uh, but it is also a vital ecological hub that supports the livelihoods of millions, uh, including the communities around the Mau and extensively even to Mfangano Highland where I work and hail. The deforestation and land degradation here have had profound impacts on climate, agriculture and water resources. So flying over this region would serve us a stark reminder of the urgent need for sustainable practices and the pivotal role that the geospatial technologies can play in restoring and preserving such vital ecosystems. That's so inspiring. And our second question focuses in on you and, and your story. So, Vincent, give us a glimpse into your life story so far with an emphasis on what you are doing currently. My journey into the realm of geography and climate science, I would say, began with a curiosity about the intricate balance between nature and human activity. This curiosity evolved into a passion of understanding the environmental challenges faced by communities, particularly those dependent on agriculture, like my own community. Currently, I am pursuing a PhD in geography at Michigan State University where my research is at the cutting edge of uh, geospatial artificial intelligence and crop niche change monitoring. My work is particularly focused on addressing food security challenges by assessing the impact of climate change and agricultural practices. But my commitment extends beyond academic research. As a project coordinator for Train My Generation Community-Based Organization on Fangano Highland, I'm actively involved in initiatives that combines environmental regeneration with public health and also vocational training. At the moment, we have insisted on regenerating the community through tree growing, not just planting. We began by purchasing seedlings from outside Mfangano Highland, transporting them into the highland and helping the communities learn the essential aspect of tree growing and the significance of regeneration, particularly through tree growing. Uh, right now, we have deployed another methodology of raising nursery beds with uh, training schools or secondary schools within the highland and also uh, at TMG project spaces, which happens to be on Fangana Island as well. So this holistic approach is driven by my belief that sustainable development must be community-centered and inclusive, addressing the immediate needs of the people, while also considering long-term environmental sustainability. And as we say always with Mark Havilland, my friend, uh, that we are here for our 30 years to see what we can achieve with this approach. And uh, one of the fruits from that is this expedition save Lake Victoria, which again, taking that 30 year approach. T tell me more about that project and that's starting in 2025, isn't it? Definitely. Now I trained my generation CBO or community-based organization uh, born in the heart of Mfangano Highland, which is right inside Lake Victoria. We have learned from the community, we have talked with the community, and one understanding we have heard is that we have a mother. We have a mother, and that mother is Lake Victoria. That has been very, very considerate and passionate in providing essential services for environmental uh, conservation, for our human uh, sustenance, for food, 
for the right environment, for the right hair, the right oxygen. And uh, one thing that we have observed is that we have not been good in exchanging an hand to our mother, that is Lake Victoria. And as such, we have had different experiences of people uh, engaging with the lake in very harmful uh, scenarios, one of which is through waste dumping directly into the lake. And because of that, we have since figured out that we need to understand how much harm we have done to our mother. How much harm have we done to Lake Victoria? What practices happens around Lake Victoria, at least on the shores of Lake Victoria, that we can turn around through uh, economic investments, through environmental cleanups that are sustainable, of course, and maybe through uh, a wake-up call to the entire communities based on Lake Victoria, including the Ugandan and, and Tanzanian waters that would preserve our lake uh, that I just called uh, our mother. So, well, uh, while we understood that this would be a very big project, we have since instituted and talked about the possibility, which we are in the planning stages at, as of now, of doing the Lake Victoria Expedition 2025 with the intention of sailing Lake Victoria uh, in a span of uh, four to six weeks, uh, covering over a thousand kilometers to understand the level of plastic contamination, the level of organic and inorganic waste on the lake, and also the community practices around the lake that we could suspect have been the harm that we do to our lake. I know this is a hugely collaborative project. And um, so how do people contribute expertise, investment into this vital work. I know you're looking to create a compelling film from this trip. So how can people get involved um, with this project? We are at the verge of getting the necessary partnerships, getting the necessary support from everybody from all over the world, the UK, Europe, the US. We, we understand that Lake Victoria is not only a source of livelihood to communities living around it, but rather it goes beyond Lake Victoria, it goes beyond Nyanza province, it goes beyond Homer Bay County, and it goes beyond Kenya and beyond Africa. And because of that, we are looking for volunteers that can uh, offer to support with the necessary funding to fund, you know, the film making process, the scientific investigation process, to uh, purchase the sailing boat and, and everything that would be needed in this expedition experience. At least for now, the only thing that we have in place is a structure of how we want uh, the expedition to be carried out. Uh, but we are calling out to everybody that is willing to support the Lake Victoria Expedition 2025 at whatever capacity, uh, be rich scientific, financially, uh, with the right equipment or with the right expertise. That's so good. Vincent, our third question of six is around reset or recharge. And we've already heard you're pursuing a PhD, you're a research fellow, you help lead the work of Train My Generation and with huge projects on the horizon. So, but Vincent, where is your place of reset and recharge? Thank you for that question. For me, honestly, the place of resort is the serene shores of Lake Victoria, particularly on Mfangano Highland. There is something profoundly rejuvenating about the calm waters and the vibrant community life. It's a place where I can reconnect with my roots, uh, reflect on my work, and draw inspiration from the resilience of the people around me. Uh, this connection to the land and water is what fuels my passion for environmental stewardship and all these community-driven initiatives. To just sit around my people and to play uh, football or soccer with my old-time friend 
is always a great reset for me. Love that. And again, for us, wonder is so powerful and so exhilarating. Um, Vincent, what wonder of the natural world excites you the most? Well, the wonder of the natural world that excites me the most is the intricate interdependence within ecosystems. Uh, take, for example, the rainforest, how they regulate climate, support biodiversity, and provide resources for millions of species, including humans. This complex web of life is a constant reminder of the delicate balance that must be maintained. Uh, it also inspires my work in geospatial artificial intelligence and remote sensing as I strive to develop solutions that can help preserve these wonders for future generations. I'm loving this. Vincent, our fifth question takes the focus onto someone else. And uh, we've asked this question to so many people throughout the last four years. But what is your story of hopefulness that's not your own about a person, business or nonprofit who are doing amazing things for the world? So who would you love to give a shout out to today? A story that fills me with hope is that of Gethsemane Garden Christian Center, founded by the late Naftali Mata on Mfangano Highland in Kenya. Naftali founded a grassroots uh, Christian center, which begins a primary and a preschool with uh, two kindergarten classes and three primary school classes sometime in 2003, when HIV AIDS had worst eat uh, the Lake Belt region. And parents were dying and leaving their children uh, behind. And the only option for such kids who were left behind was the lake. But the other question that was not clear for these children is, for how long are we going to remain fishermen to fill in the gaps for our parents? So when Naftali began Gethsemane Garden Christian Center in 2003, out of an encounter with uh, some U.S.-based church, the Calvary Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. He began to walk into the community and get children who were victims of death as a result of HIV and AIDS and other children who are living in extreme poverty. And he brought these kids together into Gethsemane Garden Christian Center and gave them education. I remember myself going to Gethsemane, though as an applicant, for some time in 2009 as a grade nine student for my secondary school education. And I saw the light that was lit in the eyes of the children that were left orphaned 10 or seven years ago. And it was at a time when there were a lot of community superstitions around HIV and AIDS. Everybody thought that, no, he must have done something wrong to the gods, and that is why he's punished. Well, ideally, people were dying left, right, and center because of HIV AIDS. And naturally began the school, but also didn't stop at that. He went ahead to teach the community on responsible sexual behavior, and also brought uh, religion into the highland. People began to know responsible behavior in a religious perspective that formed a great background, which eventually saved our community. So the work that Naftali began with his wife, Nerea, of course, who is the current director at uh, Gethsemane Garden Christian Center, uh, transformed many people and many lives, demonstrating how grassroots movements can be of uh, profound impact on both local and, and global scales. And this story deeply resonates with me as it aligns with my belief in the power of community-driven initiatives to bring about meaningful change. Very good. So this has been 
such an inspiring orbit and um and as we draw our time to a close and prepare to re-enter the earth's atmosphere vincent what insight wisdom or question would you like to leave with us i would like to leave you with a thought how can we as individuals and communities harness the power of technology not just to advance our own lives but to uplift those who are most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change and in environmental degradation. In our pursuit of progress, we must not lose sight of the interconnectedness of the world. The challenges we face are complex and multifaceted, of course, but they also present an opportunity uh, for us to innovate, to collaborate, and create solutions that befit all. So let us remember that true progress is measured not just by what we achieve, but by how inclusive and sustainable those achievements are for future generations. I so understand why Mark nominated you as a potential guest for Wonder Space. Thanks for being such a force for good and inspiration. And um, we love the project uh, in Lake Victoria and obviously the work that you are doing on the island with Train Your Generation is amazing as well. So thanks so much for being a guest on Wonder Space. What we'll do is we'll forward links uh, to the work so people can engage and do a deeper dive. But thanks again for being with us today. Yeah, thank you so much, Steve. And it was an honor to, to be invited here. I feel so much honored. I hope you enjoyed this inspiring orbit with Vincent. The transcript together with all the organisational links can be found on Vincent's episode page on ourwonder.space. Finally, I want to draw your attention to a new networking platform that we have launched to enable everyone to engage with our fifth question on Wonderspace. A networking platform called Someone Else that connects us through the way that we share hopeful stories about someone else. Go to someoneelse.space, create a simple profile and upload your story. Thanks for listening.